Hi everybody, welcome back to our series Learning to Draw with Andrew Loomis's Fun with a Pencil. And it took us to page 44 in the book to get to drawing women. A girl head must be in drawing. The phrase in drawing literally means that features must be spaced correctly on construction lines that are correct with the cranium. This is all to say that basically the faces of men are generally more forgiving. Another aspect that makes women challenging to draw is the hair. When volume is added to the cranium, but you'll see how it's not that hard to do. We just start with this sort of bald head here, and then we add the volume to it. Looking at this, these two are very similar, so I'm going to take the first two and the last one here, just to have a variation of angle. So we're going to draw this, the, the ball. Drawing nice and big so you can very clearly understand how this process unfolds. But we start here by defining the midline on that ball and dropping it down. Just rough it in at the appropriate space. Same thing sort of happens on this side. Following his contours, we're just focusing on the first drawing here at the top. And of course that subdivided line. I guess the essence to any good drawing is focusing on nature, the midline of the ball. And then we have the eye line happens a little below. When you first drop in these features always kind of remind me of some kind of robot because they don't have the full features yet. And so we'll begin with this second drawing, establishing the midline. Okay, so the midline goes down like this, curves down a little bit, like so. Shave that off. We're using the divided ball and plane method. And we have these features. Draw the brow line. And then the eye line a little below it. Nose line, mouth line. This one, the midline, we're seeing a top down view where we can see the top of the head like so. So think of this in terms of a ball and then drop that line down a little below the ball like usual, shaving off that side plane. Like so, top of the head. Following his drawing basically. Where are we getting the information from? We're following his drawing. Here's a little side tip on perspective. We have a horizon line and anything above the horizon line, if we're talking in terms of circles, is something like this. The thing that's lined right up with the horizon line is like that, and then so forth like this. If this was like a potato chip, a very flat disc, we would be seeing the bottom if we're looking up, and we would be seeing the top if we're looking down. So it rotates depending on one angle. So in this case, if we draw a ellipse around the face, naturally we're going to be seeing top, looking down on the top. Okay, so I've got the three faces roughed in. We will go with the second line. Here's where we'll start to divide a little bit of the contour line. We'll show that contour happening. We have the jaw, the uh, cheek here. And then have that change like that. The ear happening right here, like that. The little nostrils 
you can see how subtle the lines are here. They're not really overemphasized. When we drew the men, the nose lines were really force pencil pressure. These ones are barely in there. So I draw the top of the lip here, keeping in mind the center line to get the symmetry on the features. The bottom lip, like so. And then this line, the bottom of the bottom lip is just indicated by this line here. The eyebrows arch up in this particular case like so. They should be symmetrical around the midline like so. And one of the one of the tips that Andrew Loomis says is make sure generally speaking the average person has three eye lengths and what I mean by that is they have the two eye lengths and in between the two eyes there is the length of an eye and we're talking horizontally speaking you can use the eyebrows as a guideline for that and then once you have those two lines you can divide this space into three units here because the distance in the eyes is is equal like that and then everybody's eyes are shaped differently but you can see In this case, we're just beginning to learn, so you can be a little forgiving with yourself. Now we're going to add the hair, and then the second iteration, which begins up here. And this is just vaguely roughed in. There's a, a lot of interesting shapes happening here that he's just kind of roughed in, running off the page a little bit, but that's all right. And then another little curl there. And then, of course, we have this interesting shape here, which, and now he's drawn a little bit of the neckline as that is a defining feature. Okay, so that's the second iteration. Now we'll move on to the second drawing here. A little bit of this side contour okay so the eyebrow like so and the other eyebrow now keep in mind because this character is facing is the head is tilted a little more that way we're losing a little bit of the eyebrow on this side it's wrapping around the contour and now we have the contour lines And then the lips. And then the neckline here. Drawing that nose bridge, the eyes, nose here, then the lips here. Really just following his sketch at this point. That was my wife's crochet hook falling dramatically to the ground. <laughs> it's all good, babe. <laughs> and draw the bottom of the lip here. Draw that 
here and there. Again, drawing that neckline there. If you have any questions um, or comments, feel free to make them, um, and I'll be happy to answer or help out or just say hello. Just tell us where you're watching from. That's pretty cool. All right, <clears throat> now we're gonna move on to the third one. So I'm gonna try to jump in here with pen. We'll start with this iteration. <clears throat> so this character has one of these very striking eyebrows very high arched eyebrow and then follow that follow the lines that you're seeing and just try to follow what you're seeing because my instinct was to make this not so vertical but if i examine that line it actually is pretty vertical and and if you follow what you're seeing the result will be better just try to be faithful to what he drew here and that will help us learn and stuff so forth Now he's starting to draw the bottom of the lip. All right, now we move on to this other eyebrow. Really, you can tackle these features in any way you want because you already have everything laid out. And then keep in mind that around the eye, there are a lot of extra, there's extra folds. And what I mean by that is here, if you see here, there's an extra fold of skin over here. There's two layers. Now we get the little corner of the eye, just kind of roughing this in, adding a little bit of dark shadow here for the uh, eyelashes. We're just going to do our best here to rough it in. A little bit more shadow at the top, leaving a little highlight there, and then the other one. and just finish this face out. Keep in mind that the, the tendency to make a jaw too far down on, on the, the women faces, it is a tendency. Especially, well, especially if you're an artist and you're a man and you're, every artist draws based off of, well, they see their own face in the mirror all the time. So it kind of gets burned in your mind, certain proportions and stuff like that. So you notice like women artists and men artists draw the other gender differently, depending on their personal experience, basically. With the hair, just try to follow what, what Loomis has done here. A lot can suggest you don't have to draw everything with hair. You don't have to spell everything out for the viewer. A lot, a, a lot of little lines and stuff suggest the volume of the hair and what's going on with the hair. And that is, has to do with the, with the theory that, well, human beings are so used to seeing people that once they start to see a form appearing, the brain fills in the gaps about what it's looking at. So that that does play a factor. So you don't have to be so um, explicit with your lines about how, trying to explain everything. Directionality of line helps a lot in that case. Second face, here we go. And I think the best feature to start with here would be this eyebrow. Again, pretty striking eyebrow. This one as well, we can follow that angle of the nose up. 
and keep in mind that that feature does wrap around that on uh, the side of the face a little bit but then you have these little lines which are important the hairline is goes above the eyebrow like so the nose we have to keep an angle on that the angle the nose trying to follow that as best we can and then we have the nostril here and a little line indicating the edge of the nostril the lips following the midline of the face little bit of an indicator of the bottom lip here on this side and then the chin top of the chin very good just a slight indicator of the inside of the ear here a lot some of the ear is actually covered by hair in this character keeping in mind the angle of the eye and then this other eye is a little bit blocked by the nose. So I can just kind of rough that in. And then drawing in the eye like that. which again, like the other one, really kind of takes all kinds of shading and forms that indicate where these forms are going just by drawing in that there. All right, now we'll go ahead and, and do the third face real quick. Take our time, actually. Don't rush it. Uh, we'll start with the eyebrows here, following these two. The eyebrows on this one, again, you'll notice that women's eyebrows generally, at least in Andalumis's world, and I think it's pretty accurate, are thinner, generally speaking. So I get this face. bit of an indication there. Now we're going to draw this eyes in here. Two lines. One line there and right there following the angle of the top of the eye like so. And then these eyelashes. lip here shade in this lip as he's done A lot more shading in this character. 
Don't have to completely shade it as much as he did, but it's kind of fun to do that every now and then. Do, 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 do. So it would, it would be great if I had a marker, actually a larger marker on hand. So then I can draw this shadow in here very quickly. Just kind of generally following the directions of the strokes he's putting in here. The hair follows the contours of the head. So that's it. We've done three wonderful heads here and we've learned a lot. And I hope you guys have learned a lot as well. I hope you guys have had a wonderful experience. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to help out. Thank you guys so much and God bless.